So what's going on guys, I'm Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another video, welcome back to another Zombies Q&A the series, where I take your questions from the comment section below to do with the zombie storyline, easter eggs and I answer them. Just before we get into it today, this video is sponsored by the website studify.com. If you don't know, well they're an awesome service with writers who can help you with whatever school or college essays you've got coming up. If you want to, you can check out their site, customer reviews and prices to see more. But the best thing is that there's no way you'll get caught out. Studify is 100% plagiarism free and based on your requirements. They can mirror your essay writing style. If you've already done some work and need another pair of eyes, Studify's experts also do editing and proofreading. Here's how you can easily place an order. Just click, log in, enter your details, and then go straight to my orders. In this section, you can then track your orders, choose any writer you like, and chat with them directly. So here we're going to send the writer a task that'll really push them. We also set the word count and deadline. So in this case, let's go with an order on the history of Call of Duty, two pages long and two required sources. I'm actually looking forward to reading this. So all I need to do then is click confirm down here and we're done. The order is placed and I can choose any of the writers who appear on screen. You've got a great choice of writers here and you can compare their prices and read their reviews. So there we go, you play the game and Studify will take care of your homework. If you want to check this out for yourself, go ahead and visit the link in the description. And thank you to Studify for sponsoring today's video. Anyway, so getting straight into it, the first question of today is from Dark Mysteries 935 and you say, Hey BOA, do you think the squid monster in the sky of Shadows of Evil is the same beast we see on one of the Dryas and Draca paintings? If so, do you think this might be an elder god that is in charge of the Apothecans? Okay, well, for any of you guys who aren't aware, because this isn't, I guess, a massive easter egg, at least I wouldn't say so anyway, so I'm not too sure how many people would know this, or if you do, it's been such a long time since we had Dryas and Draca, you may have forgotten it, but there were four paintings you could find in this map. They told the story of the Wolf King during the Great War. You can see them up on screen now. In the first painting, we have the King sitting on his chair with his wolves. In the second one, we see him going into battle with his army. He's going to fight the Great War against the Apothecans. In the third painting, we see the results of the Great War. There are signs of destruction and death. In the top right-hand corner, we can see the giant Apothecan that we see in Shadows of Evil. And then in the fourth and final painting, which is also another interesting one, we see the Wolf King dead. He's been shot by bow and arrow and kneeling over his dead body. That is actually Leroy or Arthur, the giant that we see in Buried. He was originally at the Great War during the 1200s. But getting back to the main question, is this giant squid monster we can see in this painting from the Great War the same one we see in Shadows of Evil? Well, I don't know if it's the exact same one. It definitely does look like it's the same type of creature. As for it being that exact one, well, just like any other Apothecan, there could have been hundreds, thousands of them. But yes, it's clear to see they were there during the Great War. And then you ask, do I think it's an elder god that is in charge of the Apothecans? Well, I wouldn't say so because from what we've been told to do with the original timeline, these were the Elder Gods, these big flying creatures that we see in Revelations. I would say this is just another Apothecan. And for the last part of your question, are the Elder Gods in charge of the Apothecans? Well, again, I don't think so. That's never been mentioned in the Canorium or anywhere in the timeline. It was really the Shadow Man who was in charge of them. He gave them orders. He freed them from the Dark Aether in Revelations. The best way to describe Elder Gods, I would say they are the highest ranking in power of the Apothecans. Similar to in Cold War, how we also have Elder Gods. They're more powerful than any creature in the Dark Aether. But then we also have the One, who seems to be the leader above all else. The second question from Ant says, you did a video on Kino and what that was supposed to look like, and in that video, you said there were more maps like that. Can you do another? So if you do want to check that video out, I will link it down in the description. You are right, I did say that. And one map I guess we could talk about is Moon, or should I say Paris, because Moon originally was supposed to be Paris. We've known about this since 2008, 2009, because in Darice, which was DLC 3 for World at War. On the board here, we have multiple different maps. We can see Ascension, Kino de Toten, Call of the Dead, and there's also a picture of zombies in front of the Eiffel Tower. Besides from one of these, interestingly, these are all maps that we saw later on in Black Ops 1, but they were teased to us in DLC 3 for World at War. Now, the first question I suppose would be, why were a load of maps from Black Ops 1 teased in World at War? And that's because there was actually supposed to be a DLC 4 for World at War. We only got three DLC maps, but originally there was supposed to be a DLC 4. And when Treyarch were planning up ideas as to what the Zombies map could be, some of the ideas they came up with was a Zombies map that took place in a cinema, one that took place on the coast, and a Paris map. Now, obviously, DLC 4 never happened for whatever reason it was scrapped. Most of the map ideas were then reused later on. So the cinema map was turned into Kino de Toten and Black Ops 1. The coast map was turned into Call of the Dead. And the Paris map was turned into Moon. So Moon, originally, which was the final map for BO1, was supposed to be Paris. And there was a really good interview that took place a few years ago now between Johnny J25 and Jason Blundell, where he explains this a lot 
better than I can. So I'm going to play it for you guys. Check out the original one on Johnny's channel. I will link it down in the description. And just before you watch it, I have to say, Jason, I, I kind of miss you, man. You were an interesting guy in the zombies community. There's definitely no one like him anymore. The first zombie map I worked on was uh, Doris for mm. uh, World at War. And that... Um, that was interesting because, you know, uh, Nactador had already been done, you know, it was all rolling, and, and I got brought in for, for DLC 3. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was terrified. I was absolutely, genuinely terrified. Um, because the community was already kind of forming, and there was already kind of a passion behind it, and I was just like, how do I not mess this up? Well, you knocked it out of the park. Man. Thank you, thank you. I still, I still talk to people these days, and they'll, they'll say, oh, you do zombies? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I love Doris. All right, that's cool. I always hear that come up. Well, that was that was that was out of absolute fear, and mm -hmm. um, and then little known fact, or a fact that's kind of discussed a little bit, is we were starting to write stuff for the for the, a DLC four at the time as well, mm -hmm. so create stuff as well, uh, and that's where you'll hear about like Paris and yeah. Coast and uh, a cinema, and that got re adopted in into Kino, into Kino, and then the uh, the Coast map got turned into Call of the Dead, okay. and then the Paris map got turned into Moon. I've, I've heard about that. I yeah. guess the moon in the early stages was Paris, and yeah. then it got reworked into being on the moon. Well, it, it, they, how, do you, how do you make that jump? So they, they you know, and it was a fantastic team, you know, it was a different kind of group of guys, but a fantastic team took it, and then it's just certain of the little ideas got mm -hmm. moved. And I don't want to say it was, it was just Paris, because it wasn't. Paris is a very different map. But mm -hmm. Paris had the idea of a no man's land, and it had the Eiffel Tower, and then underneath that was a teleporter, and then there was the ah. catacombs of Paris underneath that. And... Uh, the idea was that you went into the kind of teleporter, and the and the Eiffel the Eiffel Tower was essentially a conduit for the power for it, mm -hmm. and then you got transported to this middle of oh, nowhere, it's... where the pack a punch was, and it was just zombies all coming at you. And mm -hmm. There was no cover, and uh, it was brutal. Um, so, so would say the zombies all coming at you would mm -hmm. that maybe see be reworked into like the no man's land we had in Moon? Yeah. Oh. So that was that was that idea that kind of moved over. Did and any of trenches those... and stuff? And the... so did some of those ideas then get worked into Origins? Because of course Origins has the trenches and all. That. Yeah, well Origins Origins was different. So we kind of finished Mob. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so so I did the race, and then the next time I came back was Mob, and then it was the same thing all over again. I was like, oh god, we've made all these amazing <laughs> maps. What am I going to do? Um, so so we like we got it. We got to do good. So mm -hmm. we did Mob. Uh, mob went down well. People enjoyed that, and then and then again, I just moved into another state of fear and went, "Oh God, I got to do another one." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so every time, it's always kind of terrifying. And then we went and did Origins. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's like a real kind of fear because I I never want to let down the community, and I I, I want to be faithful to gamers. I want to tell stories. I want to do cinematics, um, and trying to marry all that together mm -hmm. and not have one dominate the other is is the continual kind of balancing act of, of game development. So there we go, Moon originally was supposed to be Paris. The map consisted of a no man's land, underneath the Eiffel Tower was the teleporter, and then below ground was the catacombs. And if you wanted to pack a punch, then you would have to take the teleporter, where it would take you to a place in the middle of nowhere, and whilst you were trying to pack a punch your weapon, a load of zombies would just swarm upon you. And you can see from that, a bunch of ideas from this Paris map were actually taken and then reworked into Moon. So the no man's land in Paris is the no man's land in Moon. That's the starting area. It's the same mechanics with infinite zombies coming at you, however, the Paris one sounds a little bit more brutal because Jason says there was no cover. At least there's a little bit of cover or a few obstacles to maneuver around in No Man's Land on Moon. And also the kind of trenches and tunnels that we have on Moon. Again, those were taken from the catacombs on the Paris map. It sounds really cool, especially with the Eiffel Tower being the conduit to the teleporter. Paris isn't a map we've had in Zombies. We have been to France, which was Origins, although I wouldn't really count it. It's pretty much destroyed. It takes place during World War One. Paris would have been totally different. I'd still like to see it as a zombies map now, but to see them reuse features that were originally supposed to be in that map in Moon, I am happy that we got Moon. It is a drastic change, you know, going from Paris to outer space, but it's also a shame that it got scrapped because all of those other maps that were planned for DLC for on World at War, Kino, Call of the Dead, there's even a picture of Ascension, those we saw reworked into Black Ops 1. The Paris map was the only one that didn't make it. So yeah, there we go. That's all I've got for you guys today. As always, hopefully you have enjoyed. If you have, you know what to do, drop me a like rating. That's always really appreciated and it does help me out. Make sure you guys are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Leave any questions in the comment section below. We are getting close to 680k subs. So if you're not subbed, could we reach that? I don't know. Leave your questions down below and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.